Are NFTs ready to go mainstream? Hi there, my name is Brian Collins and welcome to the NFT Brief. So there's been some exciting news stories lately that have suggested some well-known traditional companies and Web 2.0 companies are getting into the NFT space. So could these news stories suggest that at some point NFTs will go mainstream? Well, let's look at the evidence. And please remember this content is for informational purposes, it's not financial advice. The television company Nickelodeon recently made headlines when it launched an NFT project. Nickelodeon is best known for television shows like Rugrats and Hey Arnold. And in July, they released an NFT project based on these two television shows. The NFTs were pretty cheap uh, to pick up just after Mint. And a lot of people were suggesting that this is a sign of a traditional entertainment company getting into the NFT space. And not only that, but collectors will be happy to pick up these NFTs because they'd feel a sense of nostalgia for old television shows they used to watch. And perhaps it could suggest that other entertainment companies could do the same in the future. The 64th annual Grammy Awards took place in March of 2022. Well, did you know that the organizers partnered up with a Web3 company called One Of to release an NFT collection? The NFTs were free to mint. And from what I understand, one person who picked up one of these NFTs received an all-inclusive pass for two people to the Grammy Awards to go and watch them. So obviously the Grammys has huge name recognition in the entertainment industry. So if the Grammys are getting into the NFT space, does this mean that NFTs are going to take over the entertainment industry? A more recent entertainment story about NFTs involves the British rock band Muse. So they're in the process of getting their ninth studio album ready for release. It's gonna come out later in August. This album is gonna be called Will of the People. So it's probably out at the time you're watching this video. Well, they're actually releasing a thousand editions of this album as an NFT, which will uh, contain a limited sleeve and also a digital signature from band members. And you'll be able to buy this on this eco-friendly Serenade platform. And interestingly enough, it's the first new content format that will be eligible for chart listings since album streams were added to the UK and Australian charts all the way back in 2015. So are we going to start seeing more and more bands and entertainment acts releasing their work as NFTs? And of course, who could forget the astonishing news story from 2021 all about Visa. They paid just over $150,000 to get crypto, a CryptoPunk 7610. So they paid 49.5 Ether to pick up this particular CryptoPunk and they worked with a famous NFT collector called G Money. T Tiffany, the luxury jewelry company, have announced that they've released a luxurious pendant that you can buy for a whopping $50,000. There's a limited supply of 250 of these and you can use this luxury pendant to de physically display your crypto punk if you're lucky enough to own one of them. And of course, companies like Nike have gotten into the NFT space by picking up projects like Clone X. And we've also seen Adidas release its own NFT drop. But despite all of this hype and bullish news and collaboration between traditional companies and Web 3.0 projects, NFTs aren't going mainstream anytime soon because we're in the middle of crypto winter. At the time of recording this video, Bitcoin is trading at just under $23,000. Chances are by the time you watch this video, it'll either have gone up or gone down. Don't believe anybody on Twitter who was making predictions because of the as the last few months have shown, nobody really knows what's happening with the cryptocurrency market. That may explain why some big Web3.0 companies filed for bankruptcy. However, we do know that Bitcoin hit an all-time high of just under $68,000 back on the 8th of November 2021. Until we go anywhere near these levels, it's fair to say that we're not going to see a, wide, a recovery in the wider cryptocurrency market, and that includes NFTs. And of course, Ethereum has uh, seen similar price action. So it hit an all-time high of just under, or just over $4,800 back in November. Now, since then, it's plummeted in price uh, to just under $1,000 back in June. It's recovered quite a bit since then. At the, again, at the time of recording, it's at $1,600 plus. Of course, that price will have changed by the time you watch this. Um, however, the thesis was in 2021 that when Ethereum goes up in price, NFTs go down, and when Ethereum goes down in price, NFTs go up. Unfortunately, that rule or that thesis was broken with crypto winter. NFTs went down in price and Ethereum went down in price. And you can confirm this by simply looking at the market cap of the NFT market using tools like Nansen.ai. So if you look at the overall volume for NFTs for August 2021, we're back at levels we haven't seen since, or August 2022, 
We're back at levels we haven't seen since August of 2021. The only piece of good news really is that there's more users on platforms like OpenSea and there are more marketplaces this year versus last year. So we've 143,000 plus users in OpenSea this year versus last year when we had approximately 62, 63,000 users uh, on OpenSea. But also we see a recovery in volume and into the, and the overall market cap of NFTs as a whole. NFTs aren't going mainstream anytime soon because people are just gonna lose money on them. Right now, it's not that easy to buy your first NFT. So if you're new to NFT land, you have to set up an account on an exchange like Coinbase or Kraken, get verified and load it up with some fiat or real world currency. The next thing you have to do is to buy Ethereum and also figure out what price you want to buy Ethereum at. Then once you've done all that, you need to set up a wallet for yourself using either MetaMask or Coinbase or some other option and transfer your crypto onto it. Then you need to go and visit OpenSea Connect your wallet to OpenSea, sign a transaction, and then pick your NFT that you want to buy. Look, if you've bought a few NFTs, those steps are quite simple. They only take a few minutes to go through. But people in NFT land forget that regular people will view all of that as work, review it all as technically overwhelming, and it's simply steps that they're not willing to go through. So until it becomes much easier to buy NFTs, that is, you can buy them at a click, much like downloading an app on the Apple App Store, it's hard to see how casual fans will make the first foray into NFTs. And that's why it's good to see projects like Nickelodeon and NBA Top Shots making it easier for people to purchase NFTs by just setting up an account directly with them and potentially using their visa, card, and so on. But the vast majority of NFTs are still quite cumbersome and difficult to buy, let alone secure. The NFT space is rife with scams. Spend any time on NFT Twitter and you'll find a feed of Board Ape Yacht Club and other NFT holders complaining about how their valuable JPEGs and NFTs were taken from their wallet, perhaps because they clicked on a suspicious link or somehow gave away their seed phrase. Look, the same has happened to me. My personal email was leaked in a data hack by the software company Ledger, and I've also inadvertently lost some cryptocurrency by sending it to the wrong addresses. The simple fact is hackers are organized, they're targeting NFT Discord communities, and they're willing to do whatever it takes to get your valuable JPEGs. Now, if, you're, if you've been in the NFT space for a while, you'll know how important it is to pick up a hardware wallet to secure your valuable JPEGs. You could pick up a Ledger or a Trezor device. That is, of course, an, an, an additional extra cost for those getting into the NFT space for the first time. And on, to be honest, until the NFT space becomes easier and safer to use, until we can trust what we see in Discord communities, and until projects are less likely to get hacked, it's hard to see how casual investors will get into NFTs and feel safe about doing so. The NFT space focuses too much on price action. If you spend any time on NFT Twitter, you'll see people bragging about how they minted an NFT for free or picked it up for less than one each and sold it for tens of thousands of dollars. Or they'll talk about how all of their valuable JPEGs and forever apes are worth seven figures. Does this make them good investors or good traders, or does it simply make them people who had good timing and a bit of good luck? The other thing is non-fungible tokens are a bit like all coins or cryptocurrency. They're traded on decentralized platforms like OpenSea, and you can see you know, what the volume is, the price action is for the last 24 hours and seven days. So this encourages people naturally to focus on price rather than the use case of NFTs. And unfortunately, NFTs made headlines mostly last year because of how they sold for millions of dollars. Like this CryptoPunk which sold for $11.8 million via an auction at Sotheby's Auction House. Now personally, I, you know, I love the CryptoPunks. I think they're a fantastic NFT project. They're one of the OG NFTs in the space. But it would, really be, it would really be great to see NFTs making headlines for reasons that are not related to people getting rich or that are not related to big sales like this one. The NFT space contains too many derivatives and unoriginal cheap knockoffs of other projects. At the time of recording this video, a lot of Bored Ape Yacht Club holders are picking up a project called Rare Apepi Yacht Club. It's the project that most of these Bored Ape Yacht Club holders have bought over, in fact, the last week, let alone the last day. Now, I like looking at what Bored Ape Yacht Club holders are picking up, because let's face it, Bored Ape Yacht Club still controls the NFT market in terms of market share. Now this particular NFT project, I don't know much about it and it has a floor price of 0.25 ETH. Hope it does well for the sake of all the people who picked it up. But it describes itself as a derivative nod to two of NFT culture's most iconic works, Board Ape Yacht Club and Rare Peppies. Now that may be good, but if you go on to uh, OpenSea and you go to the stats section, 
you can see that there are multiple derivative projects that will rank for a day or two and then disappear never to be seen again. You only have to spend a couple of days looking at OpenSea to start identifying these projects. Unfortunately, these projects can you know, be just a ripoff of other projects or they can be simply doing something that somebody has already done. NFTs are an exceptionally creative medium, which is why it's so unfortunate that derivatives still continue to dominate the NFT space in terms of volume and trades. And until we start seeing derivatives fade away and successful NFT projects realize their roadmaps, then it's fair to say we're not gonna see NFTs going mainstream and making headlines for the right reasons anytime soon. Do your own research, they said, but it's hard to do your own research in NFT land. Now, if you need help with it, I like using Dune Analytics or Dune.com. And I have another video on the channel all about the best Dune Analytics dashboards. I like looking at what Board Ape Yacht Club holders are picking up. And I also look, like looking at a dashboard about the overview of the market as a whole and the floor price of top NFT collections. This helps me figure out what types of uh, NFTs are worth following and which ones I should forget about. I also use Nansen.ai, which is a premium NFT analytics tool to see what mints are worth following and the floor price of different types of NFT projects. Unfortunately, Nansen isn't the cheapest NFT software to buy unless you're, suppose you're seriously invested in the NFT space. So it can be quite hard to do your own research for NFTs unless you know what you're looking at. And to be honest, it can be a part-time job, job figuring all of this out. Thankfully, some NFT projects are making it a bit easier to research individual projects. So I'm a member of the CyberKongs Discord community and they have an analytics channel inside of CyberKongs. And I've also seen a similar version of this in Anonymize, who I also profiled on this channel. So if I type in dashboard and then I type in the name of the project that I'm interested in, it will automatically generate a report that I can use to analyze the total supply of the project, how many wallets are holding it, unique wallets, their Twitter, Discord and other social stats, daily volume, current floor price distribution, previous sales, spot buys and so on. So this is a good way again of me doing my own research. But it is of course work. To be honest, on how many people are going to crawl through these additional steps to figure out if a project is worth getting. Only really those who are serious about NFTs. So it still does need to become easier for people to figure out which NFTs are worth picking up versus which ones they should skip. Unfortunately, NFTs or most NFTs are just not environmentally friendly. Ethereum, at least under proof of work, consumes as much electricity per year as countries like the Netherlands. Now that may change when the merge happens and hopefully by the time you're watching this video, the merge will have happened and NFTs are more affordable and more environmentally friendly thanks to proof of stake. And while you can pick up environmentally friend more or more environmentally friendly NFTs on Solana, on marketplaces like Magic Eden or even Tezos NFTs, the simple fact is the vast majority of volume for NFTs is still taking place on Ethereum. And until that changes, then it's hard to see how skeptics and those who criticize the NFTs and cryptocurrency as a whole for its environmental impact and justifiably so, it's hard to see how those people will change their mind about NFTs and it's hard to see how NFTs will go mainstream. The final reason why NFTs aren't ready to go mainstream just yet is due to the success of one of the space's most visible projects. I am of course talking about Board Ape Yacht Club and its child project Mutant Ape Yacht Club and also some of its other projects. Look, it's great to see Board Ape Yacht Club doing well. However, as an example, last year there was a, a story that made headlines when Jimmy Fallon and Paris Hilton talked about Board Ape Yacht Club and the Board Apes that they hold on The Tonight Show. Now, Board Ape Yacht Club is, of course, out of the reach of most people who want to pick up an NFT, so this can alienate people from getting into the space. And while I want to see uh, NFTs, you know, attract attention, and Board Ape Yacht Club are clearly doing a great job of this, and they're attracting positive press for their project, NFTs have more use cases than simple JPEGs and simple parts of internet culture. NFTs can be a type of generative art, they could be a way of supporting your creator, or they could be access to an exclusive online community. Those are just three use cases for NFTs. We really want to see NFTs make headlines that are not Bored Ape Yacht Club and that are not crypto punks for other reasons not related to floor price, price action, or influencers picking them up or being lucky enough to gifted one. Those are eight different reasons why NFTs aren't ready for mainstream yet. Look, as skeptical as I am about the potential for NFTs going mainstream anytime soon, I really wanna see NFTs succeed. They're a hugely creative medium and they could be a fantastic way of enabling creators to succeed online and also for giving collectors different things that they can collect and that they can own. They also have other use cases like generative art or access to exclusive online communities, ticketing, proof of attendance protocols and so on, all of which I haven't really talked about yet. 
Now, for all of this to happen, we really need to see NFTs becoming more affordable, becoming easier to pick up, and the space, space becoming safer to use. So what do you think? Are NFTs ready to go mainstream? Let me know in the comments section below this video. And to get more videos like this, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel.